Beware when all men speak well of you. I could list a number of people that have a lot of people speaking well about them. Jesus Christ said, Beware when all men speak well of you. There's a there is a phrase in the real estate books called caveat emptor. Let let the buyer beware. Are you buying what everybody else is buying? Are you buying into the world system? Now I'm doing this hopefully to make a point. Am I talking about? We were with all men speak well of you. And I'm going to mention some names. Now, when I mention these names, you can go on YouTube and put these people's names on YouTube, mm-hmm. and you'll find that they get lots of hits on there. What well, I mean by hits is a lot of people go on there and listen to them. 168,000, 250,000, 3 million, 5 million, you know. So I'm going to just mention some of these names. And you may have heard of these people. And you might be speaking well of them yourself. Beware when all men speak well of you. Okay? Linda Randall. Bill Gates. The Spear family. Um, Mark Lowry. Mark Lowry. Um, the Easters. The uh, Elvis Presley. Mm-hmm. Ann Murray. Karen Carpenter. Tommy Lasorda. <laughs> Tommy Lasorda. He used to be a ball player and then he was a coach. Uh, Len Dawson. Otis Taylor. Uh, Bill Clinton. Barack Obama. Mm-hmm. Johnny Cash. Yeah. Billy Joel, Petra, Ann Murray. I said Ann Murray. Mm-hmm. Be aware when all men speak well of you. Oral Roberts died today, 91 years old. A lot of people spoke well of Oral Roberts. Good Oklahoma City. I mean, Tulsa, Oklahoma. You'll see how many people speak well of Oral Roberts. Um, well, now, I'm going to mention some people's names that people don't speak very well of. And I want you to think of the contrast. So people don't speak very well with certain people. Okay? Fred Felt. Jeremiah. Ezekiel. Go down, old bald head. Who's that? Jeremiah. That was it. Elijah. Elijah. Isaiah, Paul, Stephen. This is a laundry list of people that were not spoken of. You know, my my wife has often said, "Look out for the smiles." 
we're living in a society where there are absolutely no ethics. People will outright lie to you, will tell you one thing, and turn right around and do the opposite. No ethics. And the ones that are promoted the most are the ones with the least amount of ethics. And the ones that are resolved and put upon a pedestal. Whether it's Oral Roberts lying about his hospital, or whether it's some insurance agent that tells you that you're pre-approved for insuring properties and then comes right back and lies and says they're not going to insure the property. It doesn't matter who it is. But those are the ones that are exalted and lifted up and put on a pedestal. Elvis Presley was put on a pedestal. He was multi, multi, multi millionaire. And how did he die? He died a drug head. A drug addict. Janice Joplin was put on a pedestal. How did she die? She died in her own vomit. Jimi Hendrix was put on a pedestal. Purple Hayes died in his putrid uh, vomit and being uh, overdosed on drugs. The society lifts those kind of people up. Beware when all men speak well of you. People hate Fred Phelps because he speaks the truth. People hate Jeremiah because he preaches the truth. Three people hate anyone that comes out with the truth. People hated Jesus Christ and they crucified him on the old rugged cross. And people hate Jesus Christ's true followers with a vehemence. They hate him. And so, you know, what I think is going to happen is as our society becomes more and more debauched, the more debauchery people participate in are the ones that are going to be lifted up on a pedestal. These people can even sing Christian music. Well, this record sang a lot of gospel music. You know, what about Loretta Lynn? Same thing. They take the the uh, supposed godly spiritual things and they make it vile. It's a mockery. It's blasphemy. We have to be careful not to be sucked into this world's uh, trap. Satan would have us to appeal to the lust of our flesh and to the pride of life and to the even to music that sways us into the sensuality and emotions. And you know what? It can be done through what is called Christian music. It can be done through the sentimentality and emotions of man. No one has done that any better than the local gator band. Guy Penrod and his long hair and uh, Mark Lowry and his lightness, silliness. And Bill Gator and his uh, grandfatherly appeals to everybody. But you know, that that's the ones that are, you know, everybody speaks well of. Barack Obama speaks the smooth things out of his mouth. And he appeals to the masses when he was running for president. Millions and millions and millions and millions of people were awed by this man. Literally mesmerized by Barack Hussein Obama. Satan, you say, doesn't have an influence over these things? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Other people were disliked vehemently. They tried to stand for the truth of God's word. You know, Martin Luther was hated. John Calvin was hated. Kendale, John Hunt, uh, Savonola, okay. and many of those people I just mentioned were absolutely killed for the gospel. Not Luther or Calvin, but 
And when you see our society exalting the Pope to such high degree and calling him Holy Father, beware when all men speak well of you, Pope. Beware, Barack. Beware, Ronald Reagan. Everybody, oh, I'm a Reagan Republican. Yeah, right. John. Yeah, uh, Sean Hannity, Michael Savage, Chris Segal, talk show host, you know, O'Reilly Factor. And, uh, well, they're doing great things. Rush Limbaugh is doing great things. Rush Limbaugh makes $300 million a year. $300 million, folks. Beware when all men speak well of you. And how long has he been doing that? Excellence in Broadcasting Network. <laughs> Sly is Fox Network. Sly is old Fox. Beware when all men speak well of you. If you're hated, people don't want to have anything to do with you because of your position on things and your faith, look out. You should be rejoicing. You should be rejoicing. Because people are are hating not you, but you're, they're hating what you stand for and who you're standing with, Jesus Christ. Get up and preach against divorce and remarriage. Get up and preach against nakedness and nudity. Get up and preach against homosexuality. Get up and preach against sin and wickedness and see how well you're received. Even by your own family and your relatives in our society. The Bible says many will be offended and betray one another. The daughter against the mother-in-law and so on and so on and so on. Beware when all men speak well of you. Joe Osteen, Robert Schuller. Beware, folks, when you are the president of Mid American Nazarene University and everybody's speaking well of you. Better be careful. Well, I'm going to have Mark read a little bit of scripture tonight. He said it in the most positive uh, message tonight, but. I thought it was something we need to say, beware, beware, beware. Be on guard. And the Word of God is our guiding light. The lamp under our feet and the light under our path. If we stay in the Word of God, we'll be okay. I'm, not, I'm talking about the Word of God now. I'm not talking about some newfangled version that you call the Holy Bible, which is not the Holy Bible, but which is a amalgamation of it. A false Bible. And uh, while you're... I, I'm not making any charges against anyone listening to this, but those who are celebrating this pagan Christ Mass and going along with all the idolatry associated with it, including the graven images of manger scenes and, and uh, fir and evergreen trees were bound down to them and decking them with ornaments as the pagans do and putting the holly and the ivy and the mistletoe and the yule logs in your fireplace and, and everything that goes along with it. Beware whenever you're doing the same thing everybody else is doing. And um, you, you, I'm gonna have Mark read and uh, go back to Jeremiah. We've read this before, but I think it's uh, apropos for reading tonight because we are so close to uh, the uh, time when we're doing the, the uh, Christmas thing. The 
tenth chapter of Jeremiah. Tenth chapter of Jeremiah. In the ninth chapter, it sets us up for the tenth chapter, because Jeremiah says that they bend their tongues like a bow for lies, but they are not valiant for the truth upon the earth, for they proceed from evil to evil. They know not me, saith the Lord. Take ye heed every one of his neighbor, and trust ye not in any brother. For every brother will utterly supplant, and every neighbor will walk with slanders. And they will deceive every one his neighbor, and they will speak to the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies, and worry themselves to commit iniquity. My habitation is in the midst of deceit, but through deceit they refuse to know me, saith the Lord. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will melt them, try them, for how shall I do for the daughter of my people? Now, Mark, I want you to read uh, the uh, first um, six verses of chapter 10. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain, for one cut the tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers that it moves not. They are upright as the palm tree, but speak not, they must needs be born, because they cannot go. Be not afraid of them, for they cannot do evil. There also is it in them to do good. For as much as there is none like unto thee, O Lord, thou art great, and thy name is great in might. says to me, first, they are altogether brutish and foolish. The stock is a doctrine of vanity, instruction of idols. Silver spread in the plate is brought from Tarshish and gold from Ubaz, the work of the workmen in the hands of the founder. Blue and purple is their clothing. They are all the work of cunning men. But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God, an everlasting king. At his wrath the earth shall tremble, and the nations shall not be able to buy his indignation. Hebrews 11. Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods have not made the heavens and the earth. Even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. Verse 14. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image, for his molten image is falsehood, and there is no breath in them. Verse 15. They are vanity in the work of error from the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Eighteen. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will fling out the inhabitants of the land at this once, and will distress them that they may find it so. Woe is me for my hurt, and my wound is grievous. I said, Surely this is a grief, and I must bear it. My tabernacle is spoiled, and all my cords are broken. My children are gone forth of me. They are not. There is none to stretch forth my tent anymore, and to set up my uh, curtains. The pastors are become British and have not stopped the Lord. Therefore they shall not prosper, and all their flocks shall be scattered. Well, Jeremiah tells, ask God to pour out his fury upon the heathen. That's what he does. And um, he says in chapter 12 verse uh, 10 he says many pastors destroyed my vineyard and they have trodden my portion underfoot and made my pleasant portion a desolate waste a desolate wilderness okay Mm -hmm. well beware when all men speak well of you don't you think it's time that we start acknowledging our wickedness and our iniquity and begging God to not abhor us yeah. and to forgive us 
you know, and that's the problem in our society. People don't want to ever admit that they are walking according to their own lust of their fit, uh, uh, flesh. Chapter 13 of Jeremiah, 10th verse, read that one. This evil people which refuse to hear my word with walk in the imagination of their heart and walk after other gods <coughs> to serve them to worship them shall even be as a girdle which is good for nothing. Jeremiah 14 verse 7 O Lord though our iniquities testify against us do thou it for thy name's sake for our backbitings are many we have sinned against thee. Verse 14. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies. In my name I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, neither spake unto them. They prophesy unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of not in the seat of their heart. Well, I'm glad that we're serving a merciful Savior. But I'll tell you what, and those out there are full of it. The land, is, chapter 23 says, that the land is full of adulterers. The pleasant places of the wilderness are dried up, and the curse is evil, and their force is not right. For both prophet and priest are profane. Yea, in my house have I found their wickedness, saith the Lord. So, you cannot hide from God forever. You might think you're hiding from God. He knows all things. He's on this. He's on this. He's on my present. But, if you're looking for popularity, if you're looking for acceptance of the world, if you're looking to be the uh, number one student in your classroom, and you want everybody to say good things about you, look out. Father, we pray that you take this discussion and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.